Hi there, it's Tanya. It's Thursday on my Botanicomy page, Alchemy of Soothing Botanic Ingredients. And um, I would like to welcome you to part two in my body system support with essential oils and botanicals. So today is quite interesting. It is actually a very, very large field. Um, it's not just a, a little system here or there. The nervous system is very intricate, very complicated. Um, and for a very good reason, therefore, still something that evades um, or evades all the, the workings of it still evades the Western medicine system. Um, there's just so many things that happens in the nervous system that we just don't know about. So I think today is going to be a uh, tip of the iceberg. I'm going to give you some pointers, some uh, uh, words for you to go and do a little bit of research of your own. Um, and then we're going to kick off the, the live today about the nervous system. So while we're at it i can see a lot of people are logging in so i'm just going to send them quite a couple of waves thank you facebook for that jerry hello hello anli is in yolandi is in fantastic oh tarina hello um yeah so let's kick it off uh, as the more as more people coming in uh, if you go and say hi uh, i'll be able to wave at you without a comment i won't be able to hi so if you want your name on there do it <laughs> Just go put your name in there and say hi. Hello, Cara. Welcome today. We are going to be talking about the nervous system. And today will be a little bit more about all kinds of things that we could do support to support our nervous system. It's not just essential oils. And the reason for that is, remember, the nervous system is quite intricate. And we do need to actually support our bodies or our nervous system from everywhere. So it's a completely holistic approach. Okay, so what is this nervous system that I keep on speaking about? Hang on, some more waves are required. There we go. Fantastic. So the nervous system um, is our communication channel, our entire body's communication channel. Hi, Charmaine. Welcome, welcome. And basically the nerves send and receive messages. So it's a two-way kind of communication channel. How awesome is that? Like a two-way radio, some more waves, trying to get that going. Um, and more than that, besides sending and receiving these messages, um, nerves allow us to think, they allow us to feel, and even to process sensory information. Hello, Mika, welcome for joining, and Catherine's in, yay. I'm gonna wave, there's lots more people coming in today. This is so exciting. All right, so, um, because everything in our bodies are connected, the one thing that does connect everything is the nervous system. So it's also responsible for our emotions. And unfortunately, when our emotions are a little bit out of kilter, our nervous system takes a huge knock as well. So learning to manage um, negative emotions, for instance, can help balance the nervous system, believe it or not. And essential oils obviously can help calm the body, generate a positive mood, as well as support a healthy nervous system. And more than that, obviously, there's going to be other botanicals as well. Hello, Annika. I'm glad you joined in. Fantastic. Hope you're feeling a little bit better. I know it's a little bit cold at the moment, so please stay warm in bed. Hope you've got uh, all that nice uh, Wi-Fi in your room so that you can listen today. But please stay warm. All right. And Jill has also just joined in. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yes, there's so much load shedding today. I can see people are are not happy with that but i am going to wave at the ones that are able to attend today and remember if you do miss any of these in my series all you need to do is to go and subscribe to my youtube channel because then you can go and watch the videos um, on replay and you can watch them obviously as many times as you would like to all right and obviously when you whenever you have any kind of question just go and pop them in there because um in time i'll be able to get back to you and either point you in the right direction if i don't know the answer or i'll be able to uh, teach you a skill or two on where to go and find that answer for yourself okay that's what i am about <laughs> giving you the skills so you can do it too all right so oh steph is also logged in fantastic and robin hello hello i'm gonna wave at all of you all right so let's kick it off this is quite an important subject to me because not only does it affect me but i do, I do think that it affects quite a lot of people around me because of the communications and if you just think um i mean ayurvedic medicine um, and chinese medicine has been along or uh, here for a very long time western medicine um is more symptom related where the ayurvedic and the chinese are always more focused on preventative which is really amazing uh Roby is joined in sorry i'm just going to wave at her as well there we go but now 
Um, what is really amazing about this internet age when we don't have load shedding is that everything can start being combined. So we actually now have quite a lot of specialists out there that are starting to combine all these different medicine modalities together and taking the best of each of them um, so that it can help us um, and teach us how to support our bodies naturally, but more than that, holistically, because all of them play a part. Um, if you're just going to be using one modality or one kind of medication, then you're always going to sit with some kind of side effects, never side benefits, because it's isolated. Okay, so it's symptom symptomatic relief. You're never looking at the root cause. So when you start looking at things holistically, I think you've got a better chance at actually getting to a point where your body becomes more supportive. And I know we all say we want to pull ourselves towards ourselves. Let's get ourselves back into balance. But I don't think there is a true balance ever. Yes, our bodies are designed to always move towards homeostasis. Um, but I don't think it ever reaches that. So it's a continuous movement. Okay, It's always continuously striving to get to that um, balance. Nothing can ever be balanced 100%. Okay. Um, so basically, let's let's kick it off. So I've now explained to you a little bit about what the nervous system is. And if you saw my graphic um, for the invite for today's live, um, you would have seen all those beautiful nerves running through the body. Yo, our bodies are just absolutely amazing if you think what they're capable of. And all these messages that get sent through. And there's so much information out there now showing us that mental stability um, is really important, specifically for the nervous system, because um, and I've, I've experienced that firsthand where um, physically I was experiencing quite a lot of discomfort in certain areas of my body and after cutting out everything else, um, doing the whole health routine, the, the right exercises, the right food, the right medication, all of those things together, um, those discomforts or aches and pains just don't go away. And then I read a book called um, Your Body Speaks Your Mind, um, Deb Shapiro really powerful book that because what it basically teaches you to think about is to experience to live in the moment and really feel what it is that your body is feeling because a lot of the times um, especially with introverts like myself we tend to not process very well we don't speak to people at all actually um, and what they what happens is that all this tension gets stored in our body and that then obviously develops into certain um, conditions that can be inflamed um, can cause quite a lot of discomfort so especially when nerves are involved and a lot of us are sitting out there you know it's not that long ago where um, the medical world didn't even recognize when people had something um, out of kilter with their nerves in other words all these shooting pains happen all over their bodies i mean they just thought it was in our heads there's no man it's all in your head and it's not at all we all experience pain differently we all experience it to a different degree um, some of us are really more sensitive than other people where some doctors can't believe that some people don't experience any kind of pain for the symptoms that they're experiencing, whereas others can have um, something that looks really minor, um, which is causing debilitating effects in someone's life where they physically actually can't get out of bed. So that's why they have that pain scale. And that pain scale is relevant to how you're feeling. Um, in other words, what you are observing in your own body, okay? Because they can't. How are they going to test us? How are they going to know that Tanya's 10 on the pain scale is the same as Jerry's 10 on a pain, pain scale? I mean, they just, they can't do that. So let's do this. Let's go into the things that we need to look at and to go and research um, that's going to be able to support our nervous system. So all the communications that take place, even all our muscle movements, everything that happens in our body um, happens because of the nervous system. So uh, it's obviously a very complex system. There's the brain, there's the spinal cord that goes at the back. And this is obviously a really good place to put essential oils, by the way, on the brainstem area because everything's right there. Um, and there's this complex nerve system throughout the body. Um, so it's the feelings that get affected by it. It's your muscles that get affected by it. Um, if you think, for instance, that you're going to when you touch a hot pan, which obviously I do quite a lot, <laughs> very clumsy. But when you touch a hot pan, it's the nervous system that sends the messages to the brain. Ouch! Get your hand away from that pan as soon as possible. Okay, that is the nervous system at work there, and it's really delicate. Um, and it can be really easily upset. 
I mean, even if you've gone in for a surgery, um, for instance, the amount of times I've heard of people where their nerves have been damaged by something that was supposed to be a really minor um, operation, um, and then they lose all sensation in a certain part of their um, body, or um, it's like a tingling sensation, so they can't feel on the skin, for instance, but they feel there's, there's some kind of pressure. So it's a really, really delicate system, and it's a really sensitive system, and it's something that really warrants our attention um, in supporting it as much as we can. All right, so basically, before we move on to the amazing essential oils that are going to be able to support your nervous system, let's also think um, about plants, because plants is, um, can be food. Uh, sorry, plants can be food. Obviously, it's food. Plants can be medicine, is what I was trying to say. Um, and through the Chinese and Ayurvedic medicine, there's quite a lot of research out there where we talk about things called nervines. So that word nervine um, actually refers to sinews um, from the Old Latin. And basically what that is talking about is um, the things or the agents that we can have that support nervous system or nerves. All right, so let's think for instance, um, there are things called nerving tonics, which are basically there in herbal medicine, um, which is going to assist your whole, ear, your whole body and your whole mind um, from stress and anxiety. So those kind of scenarios is basically going to, to bring those um, not into balance because we're never into balance, but it's going to calm your nervous system down. Okay, so the tonics are like tonifying. So think, for instance, if you're doing quite a lot of exercise, you're toning that muscle, and that's exactly what a nervin, nervine tonic is going to do. And things here, plants that we can look at here. Oh, there's more people joining in. Let me just quickly say hi and wave at them. We've got Peter on, fantastic, and Corbis, Stacy, you've also just joined, and Rose, brilliant. Thank you so much, guys. Tanya Hoffman is in. Brilliant. I'm just going to wave at all of you. Thank you for joining. If you missed the first part, remember I do go and put this on my YouTube channel. So just go and get the link for that. So the nervine tonics um, are what we call trophy restoratives. All right. So think things like oats, um, borage, go to cola. Go to cola is amazing, guys. It grows like a weed in South African gardens. So if you can get your hands on a starter plant for go to cola, really good for brain health as well. Um, Besides the fact that it's a nerve tonic and it is water soluble. So go to cola is really good in a smoothie, very bitter, I warn you. <laughs> and it's also really good in soups. And of course, with the cold weather that we're having at the moment, that's a really good one to have. OK, um, also think of things like St. John's wort, um, blue vervain, especially important in um, eight eye personalities who just really struggle to switch off. Um, their brains and to calm their nervous system down. Um, blue vervain is really good and I do believe you get quite a lot of good organic teas from blue vervain as well. Also again it grows like a weed in your garden. Um, I used to struggle in the beginning to get it to grow and now everywhere. It's just coming and popping up everywhere in my paving, um, everywhere in my garden as well. But it's a really beautiful plant actually because it grows these like flat green leaves at the bottom and then um, it has these long stalks. So all these plants that sort of looks like the brain with a spine, you've got to think about those ones that are going to be really good for your nervous system. But it then is these, these blue vervain flowers are like these long stalks with these little beautiful little blue flowers at the top so those are really good if we talk about nerve and relaxants those are obviously the ones that are becoming increasingly important um, because we have so much stress and tension going on in our lives okay so these are the things that are calming down the nervous system so lavender um, hops just remember if you're going to take too much hops it's going to become a sedative or a hypnotic. Okay, so remember, even if something is good, if you're going to take too much of it or you're going to use it too often, it's not going to be that good because then you're um, bringing things a little bit too far out of balance. Okay, things like Melissa and lemon balm, um, chamomile. Let's think of things like skullcap. Um, there's also something called cover cover. So all of these are what we call... Um, you know, ner relaxants, nervine relaxants, okay? And then we also have nervine stimulants. Now, there's not a lot of people at the moment that need the stimulants because of what's going on in the world and everyone actually needing to be calming down instead of being stimulated quite significantly. But things that fall into the nerve stimulants are obviously things like coffee and black and green tea, all right? So bring those down and start incorporating some of those other things and maybe make a go to cola tea. Um, and then you've also got to start thinking about adaptogens because adaptogens are also those that literally just help your body to cope with stresses a little bit better. 
and that's going to include the nervous system, all right? So examples of botanicals that are considered to be adaptogens are things like ashwagandha, so that's the withania, um, borage, Siberian ginseng, um, Korean ginseng, so all the ginseng sort of fall in that uh, apt apt adaptogenic range and if I, can, if I can just out of the top of my head quickly think of an essential oil that is also considered as an adaptogen we're thinking marjoram all right so there's quite a lot of botanicals out there that because they work in really low doses or um, it's not a very potent thing it's something that you can use on a routine basis to start bringing some support to your nervous system whether you're someone that needs a stimulant highly doubt it um, but mostly most people actually need to calm their nervous system down so they are either going to either reach for the relaxants or the tonics okay so the tonifier is going to make your nervous system stronger obviously um, and the relaxants is going to calm it down so let's move on now to what we call um, I just want to actually quickly move this please I need to go back to my notes the essential oils that are really beneficial um, to support the nervous system so here traditionally what has been used for quite some time is lavender and you remember that was also one of my relaxants um, when I was talking about the the botanical itself and not the essential oil so lavender essential oil is really good um, bergamot because it's a citrus oil and when we are uplifted and our moods are uplifted we are actually supporting our nervous system to a very high degree um, cilantro which is the green leafy part of um, the coriander plant frankincense I use frankincense very regularly. If you've attended some of my previous classes, you'll remember that I use frankincense quite often um, because I do find it to be a very meditative oil and to calm and relax my mind. And if we all just remember how quickly aromatic use of essential oils work, it's a couple of seconds. So literally opening a bottle and inhaling deeply, all those messages, remember they travel up the olfactory nerve senses which sit just below this bony part to your limbic system and your brain gets those signals to then either increase or decrease certain neurotransmitters, okay? And frankincense is definitely one of those that just slows things down a bit, helps you to calm and focus and it slows down the nervous system. All right, Roman chamomile, obviously really important. So here your essential oil aromatically is beautiful, but there's a reason why people tell you to drink Roman chamomile tea before bed because it calms the nervous system down. Also rose essential oil, absolutely beautiful for the nervous system. Basil, Copa Yiba. Um, we actually have a wellness summit running this Friday evening. If you have not yet registered for that, it is free. Please just go pop in the comments so that I can send you the link if you haven't yet registered because I do believe during the wellness summit this Friday evening, there's going to be quite a lot of talk about Copahiba and how it can support several systems in your body, okay? Not just the nervous system. Um, but Copahiba works on the CB2 receptors and it actually does direct receptor binding. So it is actually beneficial for the endocannabinoid system as well. So um, really beneficial oil to have for the nervous system vetiver absolutely brilliant at calming the nervous system down in my own experience as well as well as wild orange there's that citrus oil again all right so those are all those combinations of oils are really good to support the nervous system um, and I've actually had an experience at some stage where I got ill um, and my nervous or, or my nerves just started firing um, in weird kind of positions or places in my body um, so things that I started implementing since then is obviously the use of supportive oils but always remember besides the botanicals there's also techniques that you can do so for instance I'm sure a, a lot of you have heard before uh, people complaining about their sciatic nerve that's really on fire or burning there's a lot of good stretching techniques where you do what is called really a neural stretch. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example quickly. This is called an ulnar, neural, um, ulnar stretch for your neural nerve. So basically just take your, your thumb and your index finger, put them together. And then we're going to make this funky sign here. Stick those fingers high up in the air. You're going to turn your arm like this and then you're going to bring your pinky to your eye. Yes, this is YouTube and Facebook. It's really funny. Eh? It's only making these weird moves. But basically bringing the pinky then, as if you're going to make a mask over your face like when you were a child. That. You're actually stretching or massaging or what they call um, flossing sometimes the ulnar nerve in your arm. Okay, and that's really amazing. There's also fantastic exercises in yoga where you can stretch out your sciatic um, nerve. It doesn't really stretch, but it basically um, just elongates, okay? And it just makes everything a little bit looser, which also then does mean um, that you are going to get things moving a little bit, so any, if there's any blockages. Another thing to really consider specifically for supporting the nervous system is something we called um, trauma 
or um, tension release exercises. And this is literally where you're assisting your body to do release deep muscular patterns of stress, tension, and trauma, because usually when they're stored in those um, areas in your body, your nerves also become inflamed, okay? So um, doing these exercises are going to be really beneficial um, to also just let your body go um, and to support your nerves. Um, so that they can just not be as sensitive sometimes, all right? So um, applying essential oils while, you do, while you're doing those stretches can be really beneficial and supportive. Um, so definitely go look into those as well. And also do not forget how amazing these nervines and these adaptogens are specifically to improve sleep, okay? Because when your nervous system is able to calm down enough for you to have a very restful night's sleep, um, it's just gonna, you know, it's gonna help your adrenals reset, it's gonna help your immune system reset, and then everything, because everything is connected, it's just going to be working and supporting each other a little bit better so that we can holistically move towards a more balanced situation in our bodies. All right, lots of people just, actually just at the end here came in, I'm gonna give them a quick wave. Ricky, hello, and Anna. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, please remember you can get the replay on my YouTube channel. I'll post the link for the specific video in the comments. And if you find um, these kind of topics really useful, please share the love, all right? There's a lot of people I love doing the education part, so just share it with them. Um, and maybe just before we close off then, I'll just summarize. So the essential oils that are really supportive for the nervous system are those that calm your nervous system down. So here we're thinking out of the, just the quick ones, the ones that I have found really beneficial specifically in my own life, Copaheba, Frankincense, Vetiver, um, Marjoram because it's an adaptogen, and then also obviously including all the, the beautiful botanicals um, on a daily and a routine basis. Okay, these are not things that you're going to drink one, if, you, if you're not going to grow your own Gota Cola, if you're going to go buy a Gota Cola supplement, one supplement um, is, not, is not a magic pill. It's not going to, it's not going to solve all your life's problems. Um, but definitely combining all these approaches um, holistically um, is going to be supporting your body towards calming your nervous system down. Um, again, very hot topic at the moment because of what's going on in the world. But I think going into future as well, um, because we all need to learn to relax a little bit, to calm down our anxious feelings, because in the end, if we don't, it can affect our gut systems as well. And they, I've just given away a little hint on one of the next body systems that's gonna come up soon in one of my lives as well. So thank you so very much for joining me again today for my live on my Botanicamy page, where we always talk about an alchemy of soothing botanic ingredients. If you had any questions after today's session, please just go and pop them in the comments and I'll try and get to you as soon as possible. And then hopefully I'll see you guys again next week, Thursday for my next live, where we will be talking about the next body system that's going to really benefit from botanical ingredients, as well as the support from beautiful, potent and therapeutic grade essential oils. Thank you. Cheerio.